our prelude this morning is going to be played for us by Anne Rohde. Universalist Church of Rochester, where we are called to nurture the spirit and to serve the community. Whoever you are, we welcome you here this morning. Wherever you come from, we welcome you. And whomever, whomever, whomever you love, we welcome you here this morning. Whether you have had moments where your heart has grown 10 times or you feel heart small, we welcome you. We welcome all of you. It is good, it is good, it is good to be together this morning. If you are here uh, for the first time visiting with us this morning, we especially welcome you. Thank you so much for coming here and getting connected with us as we continue our services online. Um, if you would like, we have a visitor form for folks to fill out that was just put into the chat. Please fill it out so we can connect with you outside of this virtual space and offer you a more warm welcome into this community. As we gather this morning, and as folks have been doing already, I want to invite you to just pop into the chat and to offer a greeting. Let us know that you are here this morning. So please pop up here or down here or over there or wherever the chat is on your screen. We'd love to hear from you and hear a good morning greeting from you. Welcome. Welcome to worship at First Universalist Church. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number 100. I've got peace like a river. Let us join hearts and voices in singing together this morning, recognizing that even as we are singing muted from our own homes or wherever we find ourselves, we are creating a song across our city of Rochester, across the country and the world. So let us sing together hymn number 100. I've got peace like a river.
The heart is an amazing symbol of love. This small, powerful muscle pumps life through our bodies and life equals love and love equals life. The first time I heard the affirmation of faith, that very first line, love is the doctrine of this church, said it so simply. This church is built on the belief in love. The magical thing about love is that when you give it, when you open your heart, more love comes. The capacity for love is vast. All you have to do is give it. And here at our church, as Reverend Lang once said, we are loved by a larger love that holds us all. And love is what we give to each other and to our community. The outpouring of love and support our church has given to our city during these tumultuous times is integral to our mission to nurture the spirit and serve the community. But what is so vital in our community is that in loving each other, we love ourselves. And when we love ourselves, our hearts grow more vulnerable, more open, and more loving. So come, let us love each other, love ourselves, and worship together. Our chalice, the symbol of our UU faith, feels like the heart of our church. Its bar bright sparkling flame symbolizes the love that pulses through our community. Its warmth reminds us of the collective hug we receive when we gather, either physically in safer times or now in this virtual reality. Let, us, let its glow chase some of your shadows away and surround you with the love of those gathered here on this beautiful fall Sunday. As we light our chalice, say together our chalice lighting words, which are found on the screen or written in your order of service. Friends, would you repeat after me? May we be a people of welcome. welcome. Here, Here to grow in heart and mind and spirit. Until, and may we reach out to serve our community. So please join us in our affirmation of faith followed by our doxology. And will you repeat after me again? <laughs> Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humanity and fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the source and meaning of life. Thus do we covenant with each other and with all.
We are here learning to live by our hearts, learning to live in community without being able to physically be together. We are here to remember that how we feel, who we are, the meditations of our hearts are important. And isn't that what we need church for? To be reminded about heart-centered living. To be reminded that we have the capacity to love, even when living can feel hard, even when we might be afraid or sad or grieving. We need this church now more than ever to have a place to come together and to make sense of our days. And in order for our church to keep providing the spiritual nourishment we provide, in order to keep building community, in order to keep serving our community, we rely on your generosity. We rely on your gifts. So whatever you can, however generous you can be, we are so grateful. Please click the link in the chat to give online to First Universalist Church or feel free to send a check to the church. Thank you.
And thank you so much. So beautiful, such a touching and beautiful song. Let's just take a moment here before we move on to our story. This morning's story is a simple one. It's kind of a poem spread out over a few pages with a few illustrations. But sometimes I feel like the most simple pieces, the most simple words can get straight to the heart of a matter. And so this morning, I wanna share with you the story, My Heart by Karina Lakin. Mm. My heart is a window. My heart is a slide. My heart can be closed or opened up wide. Some days it's a puddle. Some days it's a stain. Some days it is cloudy and covered with rain. Some days it is tiny. But tiny can grow. And grow. Mm, and grow. There are days it is a fence between me and the world. Days it's a There are days that it's broken, but broken can mend. And a heart that is closed can still open again. My heart is a shadow, a light and a guide. Closed or open, I get to decide. The end. I'm so grateful that stories like these are available both for us here as a multi generational community and for some of our youngest readers. So, thank you for joining me in our story this morning. I invite you into this reverent time of sharing in the joys and the sorrows of our gathered community. If you would like to, you can place a hand over your heart that you may be able to settle in and listen from a heart-centered place. As I place stones and shells and sea glass into a bowl, I will read aloud the joys and sorrows of our gathered community all are also invited to share your joys and sorrows in the chat that we may hear from our community gathered here. 
So I just want to share our first joy this morning is a joy from Joy Lasezzi, as her daughter Zoe Valentine is the new director of congregational life at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Urbana-Champaign in Urbana, Illinois. So we're holding Joy and Zoe and your whole family in our hearts. What an awesome piece to celebrate. We have a joy submitted from a community member. I've moved back in with my family and have been able to spend more time with them in a wonderful way. A joy this morning on behalf of Virtus Robinson, who is preaching his first sermon of his internship in the UU, the Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Montpelier, Vermont. And we are just thinking of Virtus this morning. I want to share a sorrow for our country. Our hearts grieve and rage at the unjust decision for the police officers who killed Breonna Taylor, a black woman who was shot in Louisville by police while sleeping in her bed. We also share a sorrow on behalf of our Unitarian Universalist Association and our denomination at the sudden death of Alandria Williams, also known as E. E was the co-moderator of our denomination and of our Unitarian Universalist Association. And so our hearts are extremely heavy in our denomination right now. Um, I'm seeing a sorrow from Lois Baum that a dear friend Armand is having serious heart challenges. Please hold Armand in your thoughts. and a sort of joy for just making good use of a church here for our medics who are here at First Universalist Church and also a joy shared by Michael Scott. So proud of our church in Louisville for sheltering protesters. Now I'll just Continue to put a few more stones in the jar to represent all of the joys and sorrows that are left unspoken in the silent sanctuaries of our hearts. May all, may all, may all be held in the heart of love. Friends, I want to just invite you into a time of deep breathing, of resting in your chair wherever you are, sitting back on your couch. Let's just settle in for a moment of prayer and meditation with one another. We have the capacity to grow our way through this. Not the feel good kind of growth, not the intentional kind either. We have the capacity to grow our way through this. Because surviving a pandemic is a growth experience. Because tending to our hearts amidst the grief is a growth experience is stepping away from something in order to get what we need is a growth experience. We have the capacity to grow our way through this. The kind of growth that tugs at your heartstrings, the kind of growth that can only come when we have lost so much, the kind of growth that emerges from hard conversations, the kind of growth that takes place amidst the exhaustion. We have the capacity to grow our way through this. In the bits of joy we find throughout our days, in the moments when we find what actually sustains us rather than what we think should hold our hearts and spirits, in the mornings when we wake up 
feeling rested, ready for a new day. We have the capacity to grow our way through this. May your hearts rest in this knowledge, rest in this love, rest in this. Amen. Blessed be, and may it be so. Let us just take a deep breath. And let us join in collective silence. Collective, imperfect silence together. Taking time to appreciate the ways we are growing in these days. Take just a moment in this silence to notice where you are growing. A pause of acknowledgement, a time out of time. Let us join in the silence together. And let me just own for a second that we are going to go into this silence silently because I left my meditation bell in the other room. So let us enter into this silence silently, and I will invite you back with a meditation bell. Friends, let us join in a hymn of contemplation. Hymn number 1013, Open My Heart. reading this morning comes from Rainer Maria Rilke. Try to love the questions themselves. Have patience with everything unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves as if they were locked rooms or books written in a very foreign language. Don't search for the answers which could not be given to you now because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now, perhaps then, someday, far in the future, you will gradually, without even noticing it, 
live your way into the answer. just not the most gifted group of people with this beautiful Voices of the Spirit Quartet. Thank you for your offering this morning, Anne and Glenda, Howard and Lou and Theo. Thank you. So beautiful. And it's so good to see your faces. So on Friday night, uh, Anthony and I went out walking in this very warm early fall weather. And they asked me what my sermon was about this week. And I told them it was called Making Heart Space. And Anthony kind of like looked at me sideways and said, really? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking in late August when I chose these worship themes, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> And I'll also just ask for you to, you know, pray for your minister's spouse if you're the praying type, because I just ran into where Anthony was in their other church to be like, I forgot my meditation bell, please, can you hand it to me? <laughs> so what a time. But here we are. Here we are. And here's where we need to be. It's a good place to be, to explore the working of our hearts, and I'm grateful to be embarking on an exploration of making space for our hearts to grow in the midst of so much going on. If you were here last week, we talked about vulnerability. This week, as we continue on our month's theme, opening the heart, we will turn our attention inward. 
Last week was about relationship with others. This week is about more about relationship to self. It is about that free and responsible search for truth and meaning that can be found inside each one of us. And even though I'm making this distinction, we know that those two pieces don't always exist in isolation. This week is about what we could do to expand the capacity of our hearts, even when we are in crisis and overwhelmed and perhaps fearful, and even, even when we're finding small moments of joy in our days. We are exploring matters of the heart this month because our shared faith of Unitarian Universalism calls us to do so. We are a religious community that values the intellect alongside matters of the heart, the body, and the spirit. To grow each of these aspects of the self has been a theological aim of ours from the very inception of our traditions. There have been times when the focus has been more on the mind than maybe perhaps on the other three, but spiritual growth is about learning to live life, and life is certainly made up of matters of the heart, the mind, the body, the spirit. Friends, I am not here this morning to tell you that the contents of your heart needs to change, or even that in the choice between opening or closing one's heart, there is a right answer. In fact, I'm not even entirely sure that our hearts are either closed or open at any given time. But often in that in-between space these days where we can remain open to some things, closed off uh, to others, uh, sort of partially closed off here, partially open there, it's, it feels so much more like a spectrum to me at this point, sort of an either or. Matters of the heart are complicated. And what I do know, what I do recognize, is that we have agency over our attitudes towards the contents of our hearts, that we can choose to accept how we are feeling, or to reject, to condemn, or even just to wish for something different. You may be wondering how we can talk about growing our hearts when it feels like the world is on fire. How do we even consider this in the midst of the wildfires, and the uprisings, and unjust politicians and political systems. And I'm asking you this morning to consider how to create space in your heart for more compassion, for more empathy, for more love, for more understanding, because we are going to need it in the months ahead. We are going to need to pay attention to the opportunities and spaces to grow our hearts, because our hearts will be leading the way in the months ahead, through a national presidential election, through continued upheaval and systemic change, through a pandemic in Rochester in the winter time, towards our shared future. And I know I kind of cringe to think about the winter right now, but there you go. I saw a few of your faces cringe too. <sighs> we will need to be calling upon our hearts to guide us in the days ahead. And so we begin, we begin the process or maybe we continue the process of making heart space and accepting the contents of our hearts exactly as they are. If we are grieving, the honest thing to do is to accept the grief. If you are raging, the honest thing to do is to accept the rage. If you are feeling down or depressed or even feeling hopeful, or even joyful and just find the honest thing to do is to give into the feeling and let it take us where we need to go. However, I have found if I spend my days ignoring my grief or avoiding the depression and denying to myself how I am feeling, I have the capacity to share those feelings sideways, to have them come out in, intended, in unintended ways, perhaps in edginess with those I love, or in moments of eruption, or even tearful moments that cannot really be anticipated ahead of time. 
even if I feel joyful and am shaming myself for feeling good while all is going so poorly in our country and in our community, this can create a tear in the fabric of our being, a separation from the joy we authentically need to feel. We begin to make space in our hearts to create space to sit with the questions of our hearts when we accept what we are feeling, when we build the capacity to tap into how we are in the present moment. One thing I have noticed in recent months in my life is that every time I have a resentment with someone else, it begins with a judgment I have about myself. I'll say that again. Every time I have a resentment with someone else, it begins with a judgment I have about myself. Every time. It begins with something I don't like about how I'm acting or how I'm feeling or how I think I will be perceived by others. And so the resentments I carry do not often begin with a lack of compassion for another person. They begin with a lack of compassion for myself. Universalism tells us that all are loved, even ourselves, even us, even in those parts of our hearts that we wish did not exist, the things we have done that we are embarrassed about or ashamed about, the things we wish we could unsay or undo. To act on that love, to embody that love in the everyday is to learn how to grow compassion for ourselves. It is to affirm and accept how we are feeling just as we are, without exception. In the month of January of this past year, which feels like five years ago, we engaged in a group spiritual practice of a sung loving kindness meditation inspired by the Buddhist metta meditation. I believe some of you were there. We sing to ourselves, may I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be peaceful and at ease. May I be and I have to tell you that as we sang that song Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, it became the source of the most feedback our music director Brock and I have ever received about a hymn. You all shared with us that some of you would come to church just for that practice. Our hearts are in need of that loving kindness extended towards ourselves. We are in need of hearing our own well wishes. We are in need of our own compassion if we are to grow our hearts. To open the heart or to close it off, the choice is still ours. It may not always feel like our decision. It may feel like there are people in our life we absolutely have to be open to because we've had long-standing relationships with them or they have been there for us in a difficult time, but the choice is always ours. And there may be people who we stay closed off with because trust has been broken or because they remind us of someone or because we have just been hurt too many times to feel like anyone in the world would want to care for us again. Or perhaps we've just been hurt too many times to believe that anyone else was worthy of our care, of our trust, of our tender vulnerability. As we continued to sing this loving kindness meditation, this church also sang, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be whole. There were times when we were singing these lines to those who we care about or for whom we are worried. And there were times to sing these lines and visualize someone we are in conflict with, someone who it is hard to love, someone who it is hard to wish peace and ease. That is the challenge, to wish love and kindness, to wish those we dislike well, to wish them peace and ease. It is a practice that we can engage in at any time, this spiritual practice 
and one to revisit often, whether sung or spoken, to hold this loving kindness meditation. Common advice invites us to pray for those we consider our enemies or those against whom we hold a resentment, and we do not do this for them, but rather we do this for ourselves, for our own heart growth, for the capacity and willingness to forgive, for the capacity and willingness for forgiveness that has nothing to do with the other person and everything to do with what it does to us spiritually and emotionally to hang on to a conflict, to hang on to some kind of anger or rage at someone else. It can eat us up inside and wall our hearts off to the world. It is so important to have some kind of spiritual practice where we examine the contents of our own hearts. And dear ones, if you are not having a spiritual practice as a part of your daily living, I think maybe now is a great time to start. Whether it is sitting in stillness or mindfully washing the dishes or some sort of creative practice, we have to have intentional time to explore how we are feeling and what we are experiencing. There is such a tendency towards busyness and productivity in our American culture, and it keeps us from making time to just sit with what is, to get present to our own hearts. Time for these practices is precious. It creates regular patterns of checking in with ourselves, making it easier to do so with more frequency, a way of growing the heart by just listening to it and gifting your heart the attention it requires and the attention that it deserves. And the choice to have our hearts open, expansive like a slide or to be closed and serve off as a way or serve as a way to wall off the world. These choices are valid. If you are in a dangerous and untrustworthy situation where your heart is hurt over and over again, the most healthy decision is to close your heart to avoid hurt as an act of self-preservation. The piece I want to encourage you around is to acknowledge the choices that you are making and to know why you are making such a choice. To know why you have chosen to risk opening your heart to another. To know why you have chosen to close off or reserve your heart space for other pursuits or to no longer show up with a heart on sleeve for someone or something. The key is to be honest and accepting about your decisions, your choices, and to honor them. To say that these past few days and few weeks have been hard is an understatement. I know I have said and done things that have been hurtful to others in moments when I have wanted to keep my heart close or in moments of overwhelm, or even in moments when I was just feeling less than generous with others, it is not an easy time to be a human being in human community. And I wonder if anyone out there has had moments like this too, when you might have said or done, yes, I'm seeing some hands, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, it's helpful to not know when we're alone, that we're alone. I'm wondering if you've had moments like this too, where you've said or done something hurtful in the midst of a heart closed off moment that you wish you could unsay or undo. I think no one here is probably beyond this right now. <laughs> in times of deep stress, we all have said and done things we regret. And to grow our hearts is to reach out and to get honest with the folks we might have harmed about the mistakes or the moments of impatience or the times we snapped rather than to allow it to stew. To admit we were at fault and to own honestly what was going on for us. That is some heart growing work. And it feels sometimes like a foreign concept to consider. And I get that, I get it holding on to those moments, coming back to them again and again, wondering what if, what could have happened if I had said something differently or done something differently. That is the kind of stuff that can hurt our hearts and have our hearts grow cold. Because this is the moment when I tell you that this sermon was inspired by the Grinch. Very off season, 
very out of season, a creature whose heart had grown cold from lack of connection and empathy and joy and love, a being who sat and stewed in moments of hurt for so long, he decided he would steal joy from others, children's Christmas presents. I have always been fascinated by his transformation from lack of connection to being in community in a helpful and generous way, by the image of his heart growing 10 times that day. If you haven't seen the animated film, the original animated film, his tiny heart is kept in a box in his chest. And when it grows, it bursts forth through the box, breaking the walls that once contained it, rolling them back almost, a captivating image for a young child to see it has stuck with me. And it gets just to one aspect I've left out, which is that we grow our hearts through generosity with others. Not just the capitalist material generosity that a Christmas themed movie is supposed to encourage us towards, but more a generosity of spirit, a helpfulness to others, taking time to care for more than just ourselves. It may be hard to wrap our heads and hearts around this right now because so many of us are probably feeling isolated and disconnected from one another because of some of the safety precautions we have to take right now in the midst of a pandemic. And I feel like this kind of generosity of spirit can be as easy as a phone call to someone who has been on your mind, a moment of gratitude for someone's effort or presence. Being generous helps our hearts to grow because it gets us outside of ourselves. It gets us out of our own stuff and focused on being helpful or kind to someone else. And that is a part of our role in making this world a better place, or at the very least, more bearable. This generosity is behind our church's mission statement, to nurture the spirit and serve the community. We nurture the spirits of others when we are generous with them. We serve our community through acts of generosity and helpfulness genuinely offered. Dear ones, I wish for you some moments of heart growth in the days and weeks to come. I wish for you practices of listening to the heart and accepting your feelings exactly as they are, no different. I wish for you moments of opening your heart wide to those worthy of love and your full being. And I wish you moments of closing off when it gets to be too much, or when you have been hurt, or when you feel overwhelmed. I wish you honesty and self-compassion. And most of all, I wish for you a generosity with others that our world is sorely, sorely in need of. May you go forth to be that kind of force in the world this week. Amen. Blessed be, and may it be so. Our final hymn today is hymn number 34, Though I May Speak With Bravest Fire. We'll invite you to remain muted wherever you are, singing out joyfully from home, again creating a collective song from wherever we find ourselves.
extinguish our chalice flame this morning, let us read together the words printed on your screen or in your order of service. We extinguish this flame, but we keep its light in our hearts with its message of love and justice taking it outside these walls to the world we live in until we are together again. Until we are together again. I'll invite you now to uh, just turn your view to gallery view, wherever you find yourselves and reach out to the edge of your screen that we may take part in this embodied ritual of connecting with one another knowing that this is how we connect with each other in this worship service now until we are together again. May you go forth this week knowing that inward love, that self-compassion, learning acceptance for the contents of your hearts and being generous with whomever you may meet. May you know that you are loved and may you go forth and be that love to whomever you come across and whomever you meet. Amen. Blessed be and may it be so. And as we close our service this morning, I want to just invite you with, to follow the words with the, ben the benediction words with let my brave heart shine. Please join us in typing these words into the chat together as we enjoy our postlude from Anne Rohde. If we only have love, then tomorrow will dawn, and the days of our years will rise on that Embrace without fears, we will kiss with our eyes, we will sleep without tears. If we only have love with our arms open wide, then the young and the old will stand by our side. If we only have like falling like rain, then the parched desert earth will grow green again. If we only have love for the hymn that we shout, for the song that we sing, that will be those in pain. We can heal all our wounds. We can use our own names. If we only have love to embrace without fears. We will kiss with our eyes. We will sleep without tears. If we only have love, then our city will stand. Then death has no shadow. There are no foreign lands. If we only have love, we will never bow down. We'll be tall as the pines. Neither roses nor if we only have love for the hymn that we shout, for the song that we sing, then we'll find our way out. Then with nothing at all but the little we are, we'll be one with all space. 
the sun.